What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And you're listening to Liquid Carnage. First episode of 2021. We survived uh, a rough year, and uh, I feel like before we start the show, we should um, point out, or not point out, I don't know what the words are, but uh, express our acknowledge, acknowledge yeah. and express our, our deepest sympathies. Uh, a dear friend of ours passed away on New Year's Eve um, suddenly, so we've been working through and dealing with that for the last couple of days. And it's, it's never easy when it's unexpected. And before you think to yourself, well, it, what was it COVID? No, it wasn't COVID. Um, it was, it's just one of those, you know, it's hard, man. And Ralph was a dear friend to both you and myself. Uh, he's a dear friend to a lot of people. And it's, uh, it's never easy saying goodbye, especially when you don't get to do it on your terms, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, I mean, for the listeners, we usually do like a pre-talk um, for a couple minutes just to kind of get what we want to talk about or how we want to move forward. And uh, today we talked for, what, 15 minutes? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we kind of, we probably could have had half, half the, the show done. Yeah. done. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, uh, we've been away from Kingman for a couple of years, so we haven't been um, as close proximity to Ralph, except on a few occasions when we've come up to Kingman. Um, but uh, we've known him for God, seven years. Yeah. Now? So was six or seven, seven years. years. I was doing the math in my head. Seven years when we met him, we used, yeah. used to call him random Ralph. Cause he'd show up randomly and he'd leave. Randomly. Yeah, <laughs> he did. He and, did. And, uh, I remember that Dean and Danielle had met him through the gym. Yeah. Um, and they invited this guy to come to a party and he showed up and, and, uh, obviously one thing that I love about the circle of friends that we have is it's kind of like, once you get invited in, you're, you're there. In. Yeah, you're there's there. no, there's no like, okay, well, you're not allowed to come in anymore. Or, you know, it's almost like if, if you come into the group, you're in the group. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, so he was in from the moment that Dean and Danielle said, I want you to meet our friend Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but, you uh, know, game nights, movies, uh, road trips, just family dinners. He was always there. He was always, he was, uh, he was quirky, but we all are. But I think once you got to know him and he got to know you, he had a unique relationship with everybody. Nobody had the same relationship with Ralph. And I think that was part of the beauty of him is he was very diverse. So he could be diverse with all of us. And I think that that was comforting to a point if that makes sense. And um, when we got the news over the weekend, we all gathered outside masked safely because some of us do have the vid, not me, but um, you know, it's, it's going around and we were trying to figure out because we, we are the closest thing Ralph had to family in the area and um just the first thing we asked is oh who's gonna bring doritos and little caesar's pizza to game nights now because <laughs> <laughs> like like clockwork for the last seven years if you invited ralph over for some kind of game night or movie night he brought doritos and little caesar's pizzas and you know it's just things like that that you you don't realize how how precious or how funny and unique and, and genuine they are and, until you realize you'll never have that opportunity again uh, to share those moments with that person. Have you ever um, lost someone that was not an elderly person or an expected loss? Um, no, um, not like this. I mean, I, I've known people that I haven't been, I haven't been close with. Right. Um, you know, I, I, people my age know you know obviously my grandpa a few years ago uh, we had that scare with my dad uh back over the fall well, thank god he's okay uh but no one in, in in my age range that that this has happened to yeah. and i recognize that now as i end my 30s and begin my 40s in the next few months this becomes more uh of a common occurrence as you get older and yeah I, I think that's an eye-opening um uh, eye-opening experience you know yeah yeah it it, it definitely it, it it changes when it's it, when it's that close to home uh in terms of the relationship um it, there there's something to be said about hearing about someone who's distant oh that's sad that they passed away or oh gosh that's unfortunate versus uh that was someone in my inner circle yeah. 
as it were, you know, like that there is something uh, different and unique about it. Um, I know that, you know, one of the things that kind of crossed my mind is, as when I heard the news yesterday and we're recording on a Monday, but I heard the news on Sunday and to think that, you know, we start thinking of all the good and positive things about this person. Um, but it's weird how the psyche doesn't start putting those into the forefront of our thoughts about them until after they're yeah. gone. Yeah. You always, I, I think um, you always think, well, I'll just, when I see them tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them, I'll tell that to them or, you know, I'll thank them next time I see them. Cause there will be a next time. And, you know, I know it's cliche that tomorrow isn't promised today, but you know, I, th- I think when something like this happens to someone you're close with, it makes you, it, it makes you take, take stock of your life, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think that's, that's been the, the part for Noreen and I is, uh, for Noreen and me is that, you know, the last time I talked to him was about, uh, was Thanksgiving, yeah. um, and had a normal conversation like normally I do, uh, you know, thankful for you being in my life and, you know, hope that everything is going well. And of course, you know, he doesn't, he, he wasn't big on opening up emotionally like that. So, um, you know, he just said, I'm doing good. I've got some free food over at Dean's house and JP's house. You know what I mean? Like, so, so. That's what it was. It's- and knowing Ralph, knowing Ralph, he probably complained that he's yeah. had better uh, yeah. food, you know? So, uh, no, that's, that, um, that's not true. But- on holidays, he never complained that he's had better he was at least at least when he oh, went over to my parents' house because he spent Christmas with us this year. Um, uh, he was always very gracious about that. When it was barbecues and parties, yeah, he he's always had better. But holiday he's meals, he was always That's very right. grateful. And you know, like I, I mentioned, he came over and spent Thanksgiving had the, or Christmas dinner with with my family and you know the EP Tom and Janice, her girls, my parents and I. And uh, that night, he sent me a text, and it, it's it's a, a very Ralph text and he and I had a different relationship like, like he did with everyone else. But he said, thank you again for the invite for dinner. You don't know how much it means to me. And uh, it's like anytime your family, you know, you're always welcome. And he spent the, I think the last three or four Christmases with us, Christmas dinners. And um, he's just, he was one of the most genuine people and love him or hate him. Uh, he grew on you. And, 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 and he was, yes. he was someone that I think, or I, I, I know that, would put you and your needs before him if he if he knew you needed it you know and, and the impact that he had on, on all of our lives on on the intern i know jp is is pretty broken up about it because they, they were very close uh, our friend dean and his wife danielle are very we're very close to him and we all had our own very unique relationships with him and yeah and, and this was i don't know just it's sad because i i don't think any of this could have been prevented. And when it's your time, it's your time. And, you know, it's, you, we talked about quotes, the fitting for the moment and before the show. And, and I can honestly say the only thing I keep going back to just trying to think of something is, is life is a beautiful lie and death is a painful truth. And that's, that's where I'm at with this. It's, it's painful that we don't get out of this life alive on our terms. And I don't think he got to leave on his terms, but I think when he walked through the the light, he could see the the amount of, of lives that he touched that he could be proud of what he did, you know. And only his uh, only in death he could recognize that because in life, I'm not sure if people were as up front to him about his yeah life. and i think that goes back to you take that for granted with people is you don't you don't talk about that stuff because you don't want to be embarrassed and you don't want them to maybe think differently of you and it's i, I think it's important it's okay to to say that to people because it's 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 part of life you know i think that's what helps people survive you know I know that the, the moment that changed for myself and uh, um, Noreen with our relationship with him was, I think you know me well enough that I wear my emotions on my sleeve and I have a tough time relating to people who are so stoic with their emotions that they don't mm-hmm. let you in. That's always been kind of a thing that I, I just had a, I've had a tough time with. While I totally understand someone wanting to protect their emotions and be strong. 
Um, I always have felt that it's in my moment of weakness that I am relatable to other people because they can at least say, you know what, here's someone else who's having difficulties, problems, and I can relate to that. It's hard for me to relate to people who think, oh, I'm strong and nothing bad ever happens and I'm good. You know, um, we were. I think we were sitting in Dean and Danielle's uh, house before it, they'd even started the, the renovation, mm-hmm. right? It would, they just bought it and it was, we just ripped up the carpet and we were just, there was nothing in the house and we were sitting there. Uh, Ralph and I were sitting there uh, with Noreen in the living room, just talking. And he, I'm not sure if his mother just passed away or if his mother was sick. I don't remember what, but he just he was talking about her and he just started yeah. crying there was no like fake tear it was just the the thought of his mother just he just started letting his emotions go and i remembered i was not shocked as much as i was i felt more connected at that point and ever since that point I felt connected to him because I realized that all of us are more than just a simple picture of what we are. Right. And that was the first time, at least in my relationship where he let, he let me in to it was almost like him telling you, you're now part of my family and I'm going to let you in on things that I don't let everyone in on. I had a call and I'm sorry. You know, I, 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 uh, Go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. I don't think that's been recording. No, just that I, that was the moment that that he let me in, and uh, that was his way of yeah. saying, "You are now part of my family," because I don't show this to everyone. I and it, it I recognize the specialness of the moment because one, I had lost my father, and I was very open about my loss. Here was someone who was experiencing a loss and finally expressed it in a way that related to me. Like he, he, it's almost like he sensed, this is how I need to let you in Jason, because otherwise you're not going to get it. Yeah. It's, I remember with him, um, I'm just, he and I fought like brothers, you know, like, like, like honest to God siblings, we would argue on everything and, um, which is good. I mean, you know, because you have a mutual yeah. respect for each other, you can argue with someone and yeah. not violate any sort of truce or, or <laughs> you know, nothing is violated because of that. So, um, yeah, you know, that's you okay. Know, that's not a that's, bad thing. Yeah, he and I would fight and argue about everything from football to politics. Uh, the the gym he owned, we'd fight about different things, but we'd always give each other a couple days, and we'd be fine. And it's oh yeah, you know it's it's just un- one of those unfortunate. You know, you can't take it, you can't take it for granted anymore. You know. Well, and and I mean, I, I think that that's that's a big part of what everyone goes through. I mean, I feel pretty fortunate that in our lives, this is the first yep. inner circle loss that we've had. Um, you know, which means that we have a, a pretty big inner circle of friends that we've come over the last 15 years of our relationship <laughs> and to um, have enjoyed the relationship and, and, and been comfortable yeah. with the relationship that it's there, you know? I don't think you ever questioned that, Jason, I've lost everything. I need you here right now. Two and a half hours from now, I'd be at your door. You know what I mean? I feel the same way the other way, that if when the shit hit the fan, you know, this circle of friends is there. Ralph was part of that circle, and I know for a fact that he is the type of person that he would have sold everything if if a friend needed help. I feel that way, too. I really do feel that way. I mean – it's just, I don't know, man. It's, it's a loss for words right now. And I think that's part of what today's show is. It's, it's grieving and it's, um, it's just, it's unfortunate. It's, it, it's, it's how we, we work through the processes and, and, and find a way to, to be okay. How, why do you think it is that, like I mentioned earlier, why do you think it is that we only remember, all these impacts after someone 
goes and not oh, while they're here. I just think it's I think it's nature. I, I, I think that we, we honestly just think we always have tomorrow. That's what it comes down to. You know. Yeah, interesting. Like we always have tomorrow to say wh- how they impact us, or we always have tomorrow. I think so. That sometimes, sometimes you know, they'll always be here, and you know, because for for Ralph to say that to you yeah. about how much it meant to him, I mean, now looking at it, uh, you know, it probably did mean a lot. Now I'm not sure if that meant he knew something was up with him, or if if you know if he just was expressing that emotion that, Hey, uh-huh. you know, it does mean something. <clears throat> I don't know, but it just, I, I don't know. I've, I've had this happen three times and each time after the fact, after the loss, I've wondered, like when I was in college, we had a group of friends that my freshman year of college that we all did things with and hung out. And we had one friend that went home to from Seattle to Spokane, Washington for Easter. He was a very religious kid, so he wanted to go home and spend time with his uh, mother, who was a single mother. Basically, one of those stories where you like um, he, you know, she worked hard so he could get a good religious education. And then he got a scholarship to go to Seattle University because they didn't have a lot of money. So a success story. He went home to be with her for Easter. And on the way back, they got into a car accident and he died in the car accident. And I was 19 years old. So obviously that was my rocking of world. Mm. I'd never experienced death uh, that close. And I remembered we, we went, um, we just had to get out of the, the room and the group of about 10 of us went walking and we're talking about him and, and I remembered that while he was alive, we kind of made fun of him a little bit because he was a little awkward, a little quirky, nice enough guy, mm-hmm. but just a quirky dude. Um, but after we talked about good things and we talked about things that we enjoyed about him and I, I don't know. So this is like the third time now where I feel like I'm remembering the good things about them and feeling somewhat guilty yeah. that I didn't talk about that to them. I, I think that's where a often. lot of us are right now. I think in life is just reminding everybody that they need to they need to be more vocal about those things. And I, I certainly learned that lesson uh back in October where that happened with my dad. It's just one of those you know you, you learn that and you have to constantly remind yourself that because it's very yeah. easy to fall back into the pattern of you know what don't worry about it. I'm fine. Um I'll just talk to them about it tomorrow. You know, I'll always be able to call him next time. Yeah, I mean, may- maybe the blessing with my father is I got mm-hmm. three weeks with him, where it was him and I, uh, him and my mom and I, and we we were able to talk and reminisce and, um, you know, remind ourselves that there was an impact. But with with people like Ralph or with my friend, um, it's sudden. You know, you don't get a chance to talk about that. You don't get a chance to remind. I know that Noreen, when she lost her mom, I mean, she was there for the last three weeks and was able to at least settle emotions, settle things and say things, even if they weren't all the things you want to say to someone, they were something that you could like put your hands around and say, you know, we got to talk about this or I got to hold her hand one more time Um, with sudden deaths like this. It's just not the same. I mean, it's, it's, it is a whole, um, that's there, uh, the quote, you know, you mentioned a quote and I was, I think we talked about this on the, at the beginning that, you know, I, I was looking for a quote to kind of capture my feelings and, um, mine is a uh, death is a challenge. It tells us not to waste time. It tells us to tell each other right now that we love each other. And that's the way I feel that. You know, because it's sudden and we don't know, like I could be gone tomorrow. Um, it's important to remind all of us, you know what, there you we do have an impact yeah. on each other's lives. Um, and, you know, where that impact comes, sometimes it's a small impact, you know, sometimes it's a big impact. Like, we, you know, you and I, obviously, I mean, we have a pretty close relationship and doing this now coming on the end of four years you know, we've seen a lot. We've talked about a lot. We've, we've experienced a lot. I don't think that, um, you know, a day goes by or we, uh, for sure a week goes by where we don't 
commiserate with each other about life or what's going to be on the podcast or, uh, you know, so I, I think that, that you and I have had the opportunity, the blessing maybe that we can express it to each other, the role that we have. Yeah, on and I think that's lives. important. Yeah, it's, I think that's something you and I have been able to do and cultivate because of this show. Not to say we couldn't do it without it, but I think it's helped open up doors and, and, and build, I think bridges to different aspects of our lives that we might not necessarily have shared uh, as openly as we have over the past couple of years, you know? I know that when, uh, <laughs> when Noreen read uh, your Facebook post, um, she said, wow, that's something I would not have expected from Scott. Uh, and, 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 in in the meaning in, in, only in the meaning of, you know, for the longest time, and maybe it's because you were younger, you know, um, that, you know, it is what it is and kind of just, I don't want to say superficial, but just kind of, you know, Hey man, life's good. You know, everything's going fine. And there was something about your post that showed an evolution of emotions and feelings and contemplations about where your life has gone that um, made her smile, made her cry. Actually, she cried reading it. So yeah, you know I, that one just like you said. I think this is the first time that it, it's it's hit so close to me with someone in our in our in our circle in our range, and um, it it it, it makes you reflective. And it's been it, it was, it's been a shitty year. Twenty twenty was a terrible year for everybody. I mean, for there were a few positives for everyone, yeah. but I mean, let's be real. There's a lot of growth that I think everyone had an opportunity to do over the last year because you couldn't go out and do anything. So all all you had to to do was focus on yourself for a while, you know? And yeah, yeah. I, I just, you know, what, like I said, I got, I got the call um, to go, you know, help the, the police department with, with getting in and trying to facilitate that. Um, it makes you think because your heart drops instantly because you, you go to worst case scenario and then you, you just start thinking about everything. And, I, and I'll be honest, I probably wrote that four or five times because there were so many things I wanted to say and, and so many things that, you know, I had to decide, was it worth putting in a post? Basically once we, once we, we knew the family found out, his family found out it was, it was okay to say something. Was it, what did I want to keep personal for me versus what did I, you know, what did I think was okay for, for the world to, to see my emotions toward, toward him. And I, I think anyone that, that knew Ralph and, and that knew my that knew, that knows me, uh, knows that he, he is a diehard Seahawks fan and I'm a diehard Cardinal fan. And with, <laughs> yeah, and I'm a diehard yeah. Rams fan. So it exactly. Was definitely and, and no matter what with him, <laughs> um, if you want, if you were partners and you won, it's because he carried you. And if you were partners and he lost, it's because you didn't pull your weight and he, and you kept him from winning. <laughs> and you know, it's just, yeah, it, it's, you find the things that, that make you smile. And over time, I truly believe you forget all the negative things about a relationship with someone, whether it's a romantic relationship or a platonic relationship or even familial, you, you forget the things that were bad and you just remember the good. And I think that's what you want to do. Cause it's not worth remembering the bad things. Cause it doesn't change anything. You know, you, you need to focus on, on the good in the world and in your life and, and enjoy that. And remember, remember your loved ones for, for who they were and how they treated you. And it's not always going to be a hundred percent rosy, but you have to, you have to take it in stride and understand that that person's in your life for a reason and you're choosing for them to be there. And it's, it's, it's all good, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you know, that, that closeness reflects also in the fact yeah. that they let you in. Absolutely. Like Ralph, I, I mean, I, I could tell that Ralph was very guarded with who he let in. Maybe like yeah. a lot of us, right? Maybe a lot of us are like that, where we don't just let anybody. Well, I don't know. You and I are kind of open books, but I mean, but for the most yeah. of us, we, you know, we, we, we don't let people in. We're guarded about that, um, and the the fact that he let us in is a testament, not only about his recognition of who we were, but our recognition of yeah. who he was. And I- I think that's important. And, uh, and, and you know, I'm probably a lot more guarded with most people than I am with you. 
in our inner circle. But I agree. I, I, I think it, it, you know, it takes a, it takes a, a certain person that's willing to let anybody in and that's brave, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I hope that, I hope that his soul got to wherever he believes it should have gone, uh, whether it's heaven or whether whatever his beliefs were. I'm, I'm not quite sure what his beliefs were, but I hope I hope that the release of his soul to whatever place it was that he believed in got there. And hopefully it's looking down on us today, maybe guiding us a little bit about what we're saying and 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 sitting on our shoulder to let us know that yeah you know, he's okay. you know it's it's funny and, and i'll share the story as we wrap up the show um i know we're getting close on time I'll, I'll share the story um from sunday about how i found out when they called um he hasn't watched football all year for his own reasons um but i'm sure he knew seattle won the division and the cardinals and rams were playing <laughs> and if certain things happened uh the winner was going to play in seattle next week and i got the call about everything just right before kickoff, literally probably about two o'clock on Sunday afternoon. And uh, as I was going through everything and we we're trying to get, let everybody in and whatnot. Um, I just kept thinking to myself, man, this is, this is totally a Ralph thing to do, you know, making sure I don't get to watch the biggest, or I don't need to watch the biggest game of the year. Cause it doesn't matter. Cause the winner has to go to Seattle and that's where they're going to lose anyway. You know? <laughs> and, 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 and I just kept thinking that it's, it, yeah. and once I found it, it's like, that's exactly what he, he's doing this from heaven. This is, is this is exactly what, what he wanted. And then his sign and it's his sign to, to me yeah. that, Hey, don't worry about it. They're going to lose up in Seattle next week anyway. And then, I, I can I can appreciate that, and I have such a deep love uh, for him as a result of, of our time together. Uh, I will always remember that, and I will always cherish that. He, it's his way of of telling me it doesn't matter who wins; they're going to lose in Seattle next week. And I don't know why you're wasting your time because whoever goes to Seattle is going to lose. <laughs> and that was his mentality, and. It's something I will take with me for the rest of my life. And, you know, as we wrap up the show, I just want to say, I know, I hope you subscribe to the Ralph because we love you, brother, and we'll, we'll miss you. Well said, Scotty. Oh. Well said. So uh, we apologize for the somber note of the show. I, I think what we're finding out with Liquid Carnage as we evolve is we are uh, more open about talking about the, the more intimate things that go on in our life on a weekly basis. So we try to structure the shows, but sometimes you get, you get an episode like this that really kind of lets our emotions hang out. Um, but if, if you have a, a touching story about a, a loved one you lost close to your age, we'd love to hear it. We'd love to hear uh, how you uh, grieved. Hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at Liquid Carnage. Um, or if you want to give a shout out to our EP Tom for surviving his first winter up in Colorado so far, even though we're, we're two weeks into it, uh, hit him up on Twitter and Instagram at Liquid underscore EP. Well said, Scotty. Um, uh, our thoughts are with Ralph, obviously, forever at least for as long as we live. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my hope is that he's looking down at us smiling, just like you said, uh, that would be my biggest hope that he'll watch over us and, and, and guide us with little whispers of Seahawks are better than everybody else. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, or, uh, write, write an email. to, Hollywood <laughs> and ask him to the Yeah, exactly. That exactly. Awesome. Um, you want world peace? They should make a Thundercats movie. That was always his answer for everything. So uh, that being said, Jason, listening take us today, home. we really appreciate you letting us um, dedicate this podcast to Ralph. Um, that was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid courage. <laughs>